Hey, core reporters, welcome back to my channel. Um, I've got an update on the Ryan Edwards and Mackenzie Standerfer saga. The Sun has released a transcript from one of the phone calls that Mackenzie had placed to the police about her estranged husband, Ryan Edwards. And I, of course, wanted to go over it with you. It got released on Friday, but it was a very busy weekend for myself. So I was not able to film this earlier than um, I am now. So sorry about that in advance, but I am, um, you know, definitely um, looking forward to covering this with you because this is a very important case. And I think that this being public helps a lot of, um, I, I want to say young women, but young people in general, because this can happen to men as well, who might potentially find themselves right now in a similar situation, just to understand that it's not okay. And that there are, that there are ways to get out of this and to get help. So um, as we're well aware, there was a 911 called made earlier on in January about Ryan Edwards. Uh, Mackenzie had recorded some audio, uh, a phone call that he made with her where he allegedly threatened her, said that like he had some people from his gang, motorcycle biker gang, coming to her house and everything. And now we're learning that on January 15th of this year, so just over one month ago, now one month and five days ago, we'll say to be exact, one of her coworkers called for a welfare check on Mackenzie. Now, um, they're saying that um, the coworker wanted some help. She said that Mackenzie's husband smashed her phone and put a knife to her back and that um, they wanted the police to get over there to see if Mackenzie is okay. Um, mind you, Mackenzie has two phones because I remember when we were first discussing this together, I was like, well, if he smashed her phone, then how was she able to call for help? Like, that's really scary. It seems like he wanted to prevent that. But apparently he smashed her work phone and not her personal phone or vice versa. And so she was able to use the other phone in order to get in touch with a coworker and explain what it was that was allegedly going on. Now, when the coworker was on the phone with her, they could hear Ryan screaming at her in the background and she hung up saying that she had to go. Um, and in the call, they also detailed the last time that they spoke to her, which was 4.58 p.m. It was a 15 second phone call. But at 4.52, just six minutes earlier, she had told this person that she needed help and that Ryan had just smashed her phone and put a knife to her back. This is all so scary, you guys. We already mentioned this at the top of the episode, but there have been several alleged threats over the course of this relationship. And this is Ryan lashing out at Mackenzie for officially finally leaving him, right? Sent, it was posting very intimate private photos of her on the internet with degrading, disgusting words and just harassing her in general on the internet. So the, the level of escalation here is just shocking. Now, her father did also call the police a little bit later, I would say about nine days later on January 24th and told the phone call operator that Mackenzie had called him to say that she's separating from Ryan and um, that she wanted him to get her. And so the dad said that he didn't want to go himself because he just knew that it would end up in a confrontation with Ryan that would put him on the wrong side of the, of the law, which I think shows a lot of restraint on his part. You know, like obviously as a father, he loves his daughter Mackenzie so much that he would, I think he would off, right? Any parent would like want to like kill this guy who's, uh, you know, allegedly a-B-U-S-I-N-G, their daughter, who's allegedly putting knife to her back, who's allegedly um, breaking beds with her on it to intimidate her and scare her. Like, of course, you do not want to see someone like that in the flesh because you don't know what you're going to do. You're so pissed. You're so enraged that you could do just about anything and end up in jail yourself because you wasted your energy on a degenerate like this. So he did call 911 and explain his situation and say, listen, this is escalating. I need you to go in there and help and see what is going on. Apparently, Ryan had gotten nicotine in Mackenzie's eyes and everything, which must have burnt like hell. Um, uh, he also described that Ryan was allegedly holding Mackenzie in the house and refusing to allow her to get out. Like, it's just too much, you guys. It is scary. We also are aware that Ryan has a series of weapons, including assault rifles, 
pistols and army issued pistols as well. It's incredible the types of people that are allowed to have access to guns. Incredible, mind blowing, but I digress. I know there's a lot of people who are going to defend that. So let's not even get into it. The operator also said, I don't think he's ever, uh, sorry, uh, Mackenzie's dad also says that he doesn't believe that Ryan has ever gotten physical with Mackenzie in the past, but that he has put a hole in the hall, in the in the wall. So this is something that we talked about in the live stream that I did last week, which is that when the police got to the home, the marital home, they said that there was a significant amount of damage. And now we learn that Mackenzie's dad is claiming that Ryan punched at least one hole in the wall. But when you put the police report into context and they say there's a significant amount of damage, it seems as though it's more like Mackenzie only told her father about one instance or perhaps the father only witnessed one hole, but there has been a lot more of that that has allegedly happened since he heard that story or witnessed it for himself. And again, that is scary because this is a house that children are being raised in, right? And this is absolutely inappropriate in every sense of the word. word. Now, he did, he, he really downplayed Ryan's history of drug abuse, right? He's like, you know, there's a possible history of drug use. No, there's a very well-documented history. There are, there have been at least three rehab stints with this man. He's been arrested several times with various substances. So let's not sugarcoat this here. He talks about how Ryan went to rehab two years ago, doesn't know if it's the case now or whatnot. So in his mind, this is something that's very old. So it seems like he's been in the dark for the past two years. Um, they've managed to hide this pretty well. And so he's under the belief that Ryan managed to kick his addiction two years ago when he did his rehab stint, which very obviously is not the case. Now, as far as we're aware, Mackenzie did get that order of protection granted. So Ryan had been ordered to stay away from her, the home and everything like that, but he violated the order and that includes her family. So he violated the order by calling her father and basically ordering to come back to the marital home and pick up some of his belongings, which is just not something that he is allowed to do. And so that's when he was arrested. And when he was arrested, there were drugs on him and whatnot. And so those were added to the charges as well. And that leads us to where we are today. <sighs> Honestly, I'm really sad, really, really sad about what has gone on here. It's just, it's just unfortunate, right? That people like this exist among us right? They hurt people, they damage people, they're dangerous. Not only to, he's not only that allegedly to his wife Mackenzie, but also allegedly to their children. Because in these reports, in this protection order, Mackenzie is claiming that the kids have witnessed the, uh, these incidences on a couple of occasions, right? Um, so it's just sad. What happens to these kids who are traumatized from seeing this? What do you, you know, like what happens? What really does happen? I don't want to get too deep into it because sometimes they say that this is something that can become a generational curse, right? Like when you grew up watching this sort of thing happen in your home, you think it's normal. And this is how you either treat your partners in the future or how you end up being treated in the future because you've been taught that this is okay and this is normal. And it's very, 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 very scary how the, what I would consider how this what I would consider to be an epidemic kind of like spreads and continues to rage on. One thing that I found a little bit um, interesting about the police calls and stuff like that is that there's no mention of her son Hudson. So her father um, and herself, they only ever mentioned the two young kids in the house. And the two young kids are Jagger and Stella, who she shares with Ryan. So I'm not, it kind of seems like the father of her first son has him the majority of the time at this point. And so he has luckily for himself been shielded from all of this, but I don't know the full extent of it. If anybody has any further insights on this, please definitely do not hesitate to reach out with more information on that. Again, all I can say at this point is good luck to Mackenzie. I'm really happy that she was able to stand up for herself, that she does have a good, strong support network around herself, not only in her father, but in her coworkers as well to help her get through this. Ryan... I don't even know what I can say. I, I have nothing positive to say about this man, obviously, right? I just hope that he actually does face justice this time around. But I truly do worry that he will evade it again. Because guess what? Like I said in last week's stream, 
Ryan is friends with the county judge's son. They are in each other's weddings and whatnot. They're friends, friends, not just acquaintances, but friends, friends. And I think that this has been his saving grace this whole time. Hopefully the, the buck stops here, but I do fear that it won't and that he will get off again um, pretty easily here, which would be a disservice not only to himself, but the entire population as well, and the women around. Because of course, this psycho uh, wants to find a new victim, I'm sorry, I mean woman, new girlfriend, new wife, new whatever, to inflict his toxicity on. Guys, what do you think about all of this? Please do make sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.